tip here, like I said, but this top, when you flake it, it takes a lot of clear to bury this flake. When you first spray the flake on, the first coat with the flake mixed with the clear, it looks like you just sprayed a whole bunch of sand on top of it. It's that rough. So there's six coats of clear on top of this to bury this flake, and those are heavy wet coats. I lay the clear on heavy, heavy wet coats of clear to get this buried. So you have these tape lines like this, and you have to be real careful when you take these tape edges up that you don't pull the paint with it. There's a lot of paint that's bridged across right here on this. There's the tool I use. I always take and I make a cut on that line. So when I pull this off, I don't take any of the new, the new uh, paint with me. It kind of shows you how that works out. All this gets covered up with the molding on this seam. Cut up to that far. I'll trim back on the other side too. That way I don't pull any of the new paint here back with the tape. There's a pretty good bridge right here. Like I said, that'll be covered up. You don't have to worry about that. So it's a little trick. You want to be real careful when you pull that back. I like to leave them taped until I'm all done with my sanding and buffing. It keeps the rest of the car clean. You can see how clean the rest of this car stayed. Minimizes your cleanup. That's what you've got it papered off for. Might as well use it till the end of the job. All right, we're going to go ahead and keep uh, peeling all our paper off. Get the glass guy over. Get the windshield and the back glass put back in this one. We've got a new windshield to go in it. So I'll bring you back when we uh, get it put back together. All right, back on the Ford today. I installed this reproduction trim on the edge of the hood. The trim that was on here was marred pretty badly on this lip up here. That's visible when the uh, hood is down. Pretty nice piece. Went on pretty well. Actually fit pretty decent. It's pretty nice across there. Again, pretty nice fit. Much nicer than the other piece did. Okay, so we got that hood done now. And can't walk by this top without looking at the effect. But I'm putting on the molding around the roof here now. These are always a lot of fun. This one uh, has a couple of clips up on the edges, the leading edge to hold it down. Other than that, it bolts through. The clips bolt on, and this is the bad part. This trunk is so big and it's so far up in there. But we'll get to them. Get this bolter back down. Finish that off. We already put the glass back in. Alright, we're putting this molding on. And you can see I've taken these old clips off. They were just too bad. The springs box were broken off of them. So I have some new clips here. Put, putting those in. And I don't know if I can hold this camera and show you about this. Get some light on this. See, i got the clip in here. You just take that clip, you drop it in place, you turn it where it needs to be like that, and you raise this spring wire up, and you clip it down underneath the edge of the, <coughs> the edge of the trim like that. That's what keeps it from sliding back and forth and holds it in place. I had to remove the interior panel on this car to get down here where those nuts come through. But we're going to bolt it back on with some new clips instead of trying to slide it on over top of the other one. So sometimes you got to do that with these things. These old clips are original and they get rusty. That's how it goes. So another little tip I have here I'll show you. Let me lay this molding down. These washers right here. This is what I'm going to use on it. These are a cup washer. They have a rubber seal on them. I'll double washer these. The inside hole is pretty large. I think it's a little much for these to cover. I'll put these on first and slide these on. That'll be over top of the stud when it comes through. They'll go up against the inside of the car and they'll seal the back of this so the water can't run from around the outside and run down inside the trunk area. I always want to seal these holes. These will be a big leak problem if you don't seal them. All right, bring it back when we get this installed. All right, that was quite a chore. Got her all on here. Fits good on it. Lay down nice. 
opens up our line real well. Those clips really made a difference. You can see them in here. I think you'll be able to see them. Right there, you can see the washers I talked about. You put on those. Can't see that one's kind of dark, but see that one. See on the other side over there. Got those on. <clears throat> now they're all sealed up down underneath. Got nice and safe fits too. Looks real good. Same over here then. See the washers on those. I don't know if you can see that one, but we got those. <coughs> you know, these other ones are underneath. You can't reach them from inside here. You can't reach them through this bulkhead wall. You go underneath. You gotta lay down and get them up through here, through the openings up in the air. And yep, that was quite a chore. And I'm just not as young as I used to be. I'll lay up in and get all those, but we've got them all. The molding looks real nice. It separates our metal flake line from the uh, solid body paint. So I have to get this out in the sunlight so this lights up. So there we have them holding on. We will uh, bring me back when we make more progress. So we have to put the glass in now, interior moldings. I'm going to check out these C panel interior pieces that go inside right here. They may need glued on a little bit. Got them right here inside the back seat. Here's a little uh, Super 77 adhesive on those if they need it. Now's the time to do them while they're out of the car. So we'll check that out while they're out. Reassemble those, get those put back in. So you can some of the edge moldings put back on that we had to take out. We had to put the glass in. So we'll bring you back to make more progress.